Today, in this video, we'll discuss about salicylic poisoning and toxicity. Salicylic toxicity is a medical emergency and intentional ingestion or accidental overdose can cause severe metabolic derangements, which can be life-threatening. Salicylates are found in many prescription and over-the-counter medical preparations like uh, aspirin, the antacids like bismuth of salicylate, or well of wintergreen, Approximately 25,000 ex exposures to the acetyl salicylic acid are reported annually to the poison control centers in the United States. Approximately 4,000 children, 12 years of age or younger, are among those. In 2018, acetyl salicylic acid alone was involved in 17,380 cases of salicylic poisoning. Unintentional exposure is more common than the intentional exposure. Why is salicylism common? It's very common because the salicylates are widely available, easy to get, and uh, they are frequently co-ingested with uh, multiple salicylate containing agents. Moreover, uh, because of the non-linear pharmacokinetic properties of the salicylate, people uh, can develop salicylate toxicity. Uh, salicylates are metabolized by the first order elimination in the liver. So when this first order elimination is saturated, uh, then the metabolism is switched to the zero order elimination so in zero or elimination fixed amount of the drug is excreted uh, irrespective of the plasma concentration so it increases the risk of the toxicity about 10 to 30 gram of the aspirin can be potentially lethal the symptoms depend upon the dose of the ingested aspirin or the salicylate like if a patient ingests less than 150 mg per kg they may develop no symptom or minimal symptoms uh, similarly if they ingest more than 500 mg per kg it can be potentially lethal now let's talk about the mechanism of toxicity salicylates they interfere with the cellular metabolism they inhibit the oxidative phosphorylation leading to the lactic acidosis and the hyperpyrexia similarly they activate the respiratory centers of the medulla uh, which leads to the tachypnea hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis. Similarly, they also cause a catabolic state resulting in the accumulation of the ketone bodies and other organic acids leading to the wide anion gap metabolic acidosis. Moreover, they completely inactivate the CNS and cardiorespiratory centers in the setting of the severe toxicity which can be lit. Moreover, uh, they stimulate the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the medulla that is responsible for the nausea and vomiting. Moreover, they deplete the glycogen stores and impair the gluconeogenesis, which uh, can cause the hyperglycemia and neuroglycopenia. In addition to those mechanisms, uh, salicylates also inhibit the cyclooxygenase because of which uh, there is a decrease in the synthesis of the prostaglandins, prostacyclines, and thromboxins. It also contributes to the platelet dysfunction, gastric mucosal injury, and the renal impairment. Moreover, the salicylates, they directly irritate the gastric mucosa, causing the gastric ulcers and gastrointestinal hemorrhage. Salicylates can also directly affect the cochlear hair cells and the earth nerve, uh, which can cause tinnitus and hearing changes. Salicylate poisoning can be acute or chronic. We'll mainly focus on the acute poisoning. Acute salicylate intoxication usually occurs in the young adults with a history of psychiatric illness and who have had previous overdose usually the symptoms uh, occur three to eight hours after the ingestion and the severity of the symptoms uh, depend upon the amount ingested the patient will present with the features of mild toxicity if the salicylate level is between 40 to 80 and they will present with the features of a severe toxicity uh, if the salicylate level is more than 100 mg per deciliter symptoms of the mild salicylate toxicity include nausea vomiting generalized abdominal pain tachypnea because of the stimulation of the respiratory center and compensation for the metabolic acidosis and patient can also present with the tinnitus because of the involvement of the cochlear hair cells in the moderate salicylic toxicity patient starts to develop more severe neurological symptoms which might include confusion slurred speech hallucinations and there can be more pronounced tachypnea Patient can present with tachycardia, orthostatic hypertension, and these symptoms they occur six to eighteen hours after the ingestion. The features of the severe salicylic toxicity they usually occur twelve to twenty-four hours after the ingestion. They include this features like cerebral and the pulmonary edema. Patient can also have obtundition, seizures. Patient uh, may develop hyperventilation because of the uh, fatigue, and uh, this may replace the hyperventilation. 
similar patient can present with cardiac dysrhythmias like uh, cardiac arrest and they can with hyperthermia because of the uncoupling of the oxidative phosphorylation. Chronic salicylic toxicity presents similarly to the acute toxicity but at lower levels. This chart summarizes the features of the salicylate toxicity. History and physical examination is very important for the diagnosis. History should focus on time of ingestion, amount of the salicylate ingested, formulation ingested, whether immediate release or delayed release. As well as uh, we need to ask about whether patient just ingested salicylate or did they take it with some other substances like paracetamol, alcohol, or any other compounds. We need to ask about whether it was accidental ingestion or the intentional ingestion. Moreover, we need to ask about the symptoms attributable to the salicylate toxicity like hypothermia, tinnitus, hearing loss, nausea, vomiting, trouble breathing, agitation, confusion, and restlessness. In physical examination, we need to assess the respiration for the rate, depth, and signs of pulmonary edema. Moreover, we have to examine the skin for the diaphoresis, decrease the skin torque, and the cool extremities. We need to assess the mental status and also frequent assessment of the vital signs is also very important. Lab investigations can also help in the diagnosis. Salicylate uh, labels are very important and serial labels are recommended as absorption is widely variable and it impacts the treatment. Uh, in cases of the mild toxicity, salicylate label will be around 40 to 80 mg per TL and for the moderate toxicity, salicylate label will be 80 to 100 mg per TL and if it's more than 100 mg per TL, it is susceptible to severe toxicity. In addition to the salicylate label, ABG and VVG provides a very significant information regarding the salicylate toxicity. A patient can present with a pure respiratory alkalosis due to tachypnea. There can be a metabolic acidosis with respiratory alkalosis at moderate levels. And at the severe toxicity, patient can present with the worsening of the metabolic acidosis with an anion gap. Other than ABG or VBG, we need to check the acetaminophen level. Moreover, we need to test for the electrolytes like calcium, magnesium. Other than those investigations, we can look for the liver function test, renal function test, CVC to look for leukocytosis, thrombocytopenia. We can check for the lactate, coagulation studies should be done. ECG is sometimes important because patient can present with dysrhythmias. CT head is also important if patient has altered mental status. Similarly, we need to perform the urinalysis and um, all women of the childbearing age should undergo pregnancy testing. Among the lab investigations, serial ABG and the salicylate labels should be obtained until labels clearly begin to downtrade and pH stabilizes. So let's talk about the management of salicylate toxicity. We should avoid tracheal intubation if at all possible and the intubation should be reserved for the patient with hypoventilation or requiring the airway protection because in salicylate toxicity, patients are usually hyperventilating to compensate for the metabolic transplant. So, if we intubate the patient, we uh, should make sure that the post-intubation mechanical ventilation must match the high minute ventilation of the patient prior to intubation. This is very important. So, we need to resume hyperventilation on the ventilator and patient might require emergent dialysis following the intubation. And if patient is agitated, we need to, we should avoid applying physical strengths or administering sedative medications because this may worsen the metabolic acidosis by impairing the respiratory alkalosis. Fluid resuscitation has a very important role in the management of the salicylate toxicity, and resuscitation should be done unless there is cerebral or pulmonary edema, because these patients are volume depleted due to the hyperventilation, fever, and increased metabolic acidosis. So fluid resuscitation should be done with the dextrose containing fluid along with the sodium bicarbonate. Dextrose treats the CNS hyperglycemia and the sodium bicarbonate corrects the metabolic acidosis. Activated charcoal can be administered multiple times in salicylate toxicity. Similarly, gastric lavage can be considered in the patients who present after the acute ingestion of the enteric coated aspirin. Supplemental glucose is very important in patients with the altered mental status and it should be given to those patients even if the serum glucose concentration is normal. Sodium bicarbonate is the main treatment for the salicylate toxicity and sodium bicarbonate uh, helps by increasing the salicylate elimination. Bolus therapy usually includes the 1 to 2 mL equivalent per kg, IV push over 3 to 5 minutes followed by the maintenance of 100 to 150 mEq of sodium bicarbonate 
at 250 ml per hour but we need to understand that IV sodium bicarbonate is not compatible with the calcium salts so we should be careful while uh, managing the coexisting hypocalcemia similarly alkalosis is not a contraindication to the sodium bicarbonate therapy so we should not delay the sodium bicarbonate therapy in salicylic poisoning and acetazolamide should not be used to alkalize the urine in salicylic poisoning patient might require hemodialysis as well hemodialysis removes salicylates and the lactate there are many indications for this uh, hemodialysis and if patient meets um, these indications hemodialysis should be initiated in patients with salicylate toxicity patient will have seizure we can use the benzodiazepines to treat the seizure so the differential diagnosis for the salicylate toxicity is broad they include the caffeine toxicity ethylene glycol overdose hydrocarbon toxicity even sepsis diabetic ketoacidosis iron toxicity as well some of the complications include respiratory arrest apnea aspiration pneumonitis deafness tinnitus asystole hypotension encephalopathy seizure even coma overall mortality is less than 0.01 percent is with timely management however in cases of a severe toxicity 15 percent of the patients may die and for the survivors some residual neurological deficit may persist for few years so thank you so much for watching please subscribe to our channel for more videos